Good day. You know, there's been a controversy about deacons in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod for a few decades now. And at the 2016 convention, there was a resolution passed that essentially terminates deacons in the Missouri Synod today. And one reason they gave for that was they said, this is the stance of the Lutheran confessions. And Lutheran confessions express our faith as Lutherans, but also provide the rule and the norm. Now, in fact, do the Lutheran confessions actually explicitly mention deacons? And if so, what do they say about them? Well, I've asked seminary professors and presidents, synodical staff, and task forces if deacons are mentioned in the Lutheran confessions. They all say no. And I've looked at a lot of articles and seminary journals and task force reports, convention resolutions, and books. Okay, but not even one of them quote even one part of the confessions that mention deacons. Now, uh, it's even rare, actually, that they examine the biblical data about deacons when discussing them. Now, some of them, by the way, if I ask about the Lutheran confessions of deacons, will say, well, Article 14 of the confessions. But does Article 14 actually mention deacons in it? Well, no, it actually doesn't. Now, how can all these well-educated, good men not know that the confessions actually do mention deacons? How can that be? Now, if you go back in the Missouri Senate a hundred years ago, they knew about deacons and what the confession said about them. But the recent American Missouri Synod somehow doesn't know what the confessions say about deacons. There's a big knowledge gap about deacons in the Lutheran confessions. I'll give you some examples. Okay, now the Book of Concord that's been used by many pastors over the years was the edition by Tappert in 1959. It has a 67-page index that lists lots of unusual kinds of topics like Assidia, Ashenese, Apollonia, Applegod, and Aragon, but it has no listing at all for deacons in it. The newer edition of the Lutheran Confessions, the 2000 edition by Kolb, has a longer index, an 80-page index, but it has no listing for deacons either. And so pastors tend to think, well, if these reference books don't have reference to deacons, I guess the Lutheran Confessions don't mention them. And I've looked at lots of journal articles, including those that were written about ministry and about the topic of deacons, like those from Dr. Masaki and Okamoto, which were studied by the uh, Council of Presidents. They don't mention them either. Other statements by seminaries, task force report, none of them quote the Lutheran Confessions on deacons. There's this big knowledge gap. No one seems to know that yes, the Lutheran Confessions do have things to say about deacons by name. Okay, so what do the Lutheran Confessions say about deacons? It says that there are three major orders of ministry in the church. One of these orders or offices of ministries is deacon. This is a long-standing thing, goes back to the early church. There are three major orders that are mentioned in scripture, bishop, pastor, and deacon. There are also minor orders that the Roman Church added later, such as acolyte and lector, and so the Lutherans said that's part of tradition, it's not a part of the Bible, we'll not have those. But we'll continue to have deacons because it's one of the major orders of ministry, and they use the word ordain for all three orders. Okay, so I'll describe for you where in the Lutheran Confessions deacons are listed. Firstly, it's in the Augsburg Confession, Article 24 on the Mass. It states that deacon is an order or office of clergy. Verse 37. It appears from the ancient canons that someone celebrated the Mass from whom all other presbyters and deacons received the body of the Lord. For thus the words of the Nicene Creed say, let the deacons, according to their order, receive Holy Communion after the presbyters. By the way, the German word for this order is Ordentlicht, which also appears in Article 14. I'll get back to that later. Okay, so these two offices or orders of clergy, presbyter and deacon, are mentioned together, as they're mentioned together in Philippians 1.1 1, 1 and 1 Timothy 3. 
Now, the second reference to deacons in the Lutheran Confessions is in the Augsburg Confession, Article 23, Marriage of Priests. <coughs> it states that deacons are clergymen and demands that because deacons are clergymen, they need to follow the marriage rules of clergy, not of laity. Quote, it was customary for priests and deacons to marry in the church in former times. Pius II said that while there may well have been some reasons for prohibiting the marriage of clergymen, there are now much more important reasons for permitting them to be married. That's from the German. They're saying that it was normal in the early church and in the Reformation church to have deacons and pastors side by side. Now, the Lutheran confessions use, you'll notice, the word clergy in a different way that we typically do. We typically say that clergy is seminary-trained, ordained pastors. In the Lutheran Confessions, they use the word clergy in a broader sense um, to include the three orders of ministry, including the order of deacon and the order of pastor. Now, the third reference to deacons in the Lutheran Confessions is from the Treatise on Power and Primacy of the Pope. In it, it says that Roman Catholic bishops are not needed to call or ordain ministers such as deacons because congregations and pastors can do that themselves. 32, 62. The deacons, moreover, may elect from among themselves one whom they know to be active and name him archdeacon. It's manifest that ordination administered by a pastor in his own church is valid by divine law. If a pastor in his own church ordains certain suitable persons to the ministry, such ordination is, according to divine law, undoubtedly effective and right. For wherever the church is, there is the authority, command, to administer the gospel. Therefore, it's necessary for the church to retain the authority to call, elect, and ordain ministers. So you notice there's more than one kind of minister or clergyman. There are offices or orders of ministry that include the office or order of deacon and the office or order of pastor. They're both called and ordained to be a minister of the word. By the way, you'll notice that in this case, the power and primacy of the Pope says that a pastor can ordain in his own church. He doesn't need a national approval to do that. Okay, so what do the Lutheran Confessions say? It says there are offices and orders established by God. That's plural in German, Amter und Orden. This is a biblical thing that continues even after Roman Catholic tradition is thrown out. Small call articles, for example, 3 2, include deacons as one of the formal offices of ministry, not just as aspects of ministry. Okay, so now Article 14 does not mention deacons, but how does that relate? Article 14 is real brief. It says, of, ecclesi of ecclesiastical order, they teach that no one should publicly teach in the church or administer the sacraments unless he be regularly called. So the key word is regularly called. Some think called refers just to seminary trained ordained pastors but it doesn't say that okay so what do these words regularly called actually mean now it would be good to study these words in the lutheran confessions in the same the way that we would study for instance biblical greek words in the new testament when you see how the word is used in different contexts you get an idea of what the word actually means and we can do that with the lutheran confessions with these two words regularly called now article 14 does not identify what order or office they are called to it does not explicitly mention pastors or bishops or deacons lutheran confessions does say that they ordain deacons so deacons must be regularly called to office because they are ordained, as in small card article 3 in Augsburg Confession 23 and 24. There's more than one office or order. 
Okay, now the words regularly called, of course, were written originally in two other languages. In Latin, it was right vocatus. That's the term that's most often used today. In German, it was ordentlichten Beruf. Now let's look at what these words mean in other contexts in the Lutheran Confessions in order to get a better idea what they mean in Augsburg Confession 14. Okay, in German, the word regularly is ordentlichten. That's the adverb of the term regular order that I just read before in Article 24 about ministers like deacons. Okay, now the best general purpose translation for ordentlichten is orderly. Confessions say that the sun rises and sets in an orderly, ordentlichten way. Formula of Concord 6, verse 2 and 6. Confessions also say that the family is orderly with children submitted to their parents in an orderly way and disorder leads to trouble. That's from the large catechism, Fourth Commandment, 108. In other words, orderly call, orderly is not used distinctly of an orderly way of calling pastors in particular. It just speaks of an orderly way of calling to any position or order or office or beruf or vocatus. Okay, now why did the reformers include this? Well, the Roman Catholics were saying that Protestants had lost Catholic bishops and so they didn't have any way to ordain clergymen. So, well, could anybody claim to be a pastor? Or uh, could anyone who's not qualified even be placed into that office? Would they be reformed ecclesiastical hot dogs? Latin, hottest vocatus, hottest dogus? Well, the Reformation answer was, well, hey, we do have ways to orderly ordain people to the offices or orders of or vocatuses of ministry. Uh, we train them, examine them, the congregations call them, they're ordained in public. We don't need a bishop or a synod to do this. Our own pastors and congregations can do this. They just follow an orderly way, an ordentlichten way of doing it. Okay, now, Augsburg Confession 14 is often mentioned, but I don't remember everyone mentioning the apology to Article 14, which is the expansion of it. Okay, it adds this. It says the reformers want to retain grades or orders of ministers. That's plural. And they have now have an orderly way of placing ministers into voc vocations, orders, offices, grades of minister, including presbyter and deacon. And the word right just means regular, um, regular orderly, ritualized process of ordaining men to ministry, um, finally culminating in some uh, ordination ritual. Okay, so that's what orderly means, just orderly. Doesn't mean in particular pastors at all. Okay, now what about the word vocatus, or German beruf? Now the word vocatus is actually used in the confessions also of the call that all Christians have from God. That's in the Epitome, Article 11. Okay, now the German word beruf in its verb form is used in small called Articles 10 concerning ordination and vocation. It identifies that there's more than one order or office of church ministry ordained to a work or an office, it says. Uh, Werk order amt in German. And then it criticizes Roman Catholic bishops who are driving out men who want to be called or who are called to an office. That's berufen, amt berufen. Uh, the Germanized form of the Latin word vocation is also used later on as a title, uh, referring to more than one office or order of ministry, not just the pastor. Then in small called articles 10 and 3, the verb ordain and the noun ordination or order is used several times to ordain men to orders or offices, which include uh, pastor or deacon. Okay, so what's the summary of how the whole Lutheran Confessions use these terms, Beruf, Vocatus, Ordnung, Licht, and Right? 
Well, each of these, including 14, 23, and 24, uh, basically refer to deacon as a class of minister, um, a particular class or order or office. So it's saying there is a beruf, a vocatus, a position, a calling, a order, a office, a pastor, and then there's another beruf, vocatus, uh, office, order, vocatus, calling to be deacon. These two offices or orders exist side by side, and they're similar in that they are ministers of the word, but different in their exact responsibilities, in their different oversight or authority. Now, nowadays, district offices do have two Baruf vocatus callings, one being pastor, the other being deacon, and congregations have no trouble distinguishing between those offices. They really have no trouble distinguishing. We have orderly called deacons today. Districts examine, call, elect, commission deacons in an orderly, interlinked, and right profit process. They don't circumstance vent the process or feel the qualifications. There's an ordinate lichten way um, of having this office of deacon, just as there is an ordinate lichten way of having the office of pastor. And you can be called to more than one office, beruf, vocatus, either that of pastor or that of deacon. Now, in the modern Missouri Synod, we use the word ordain just to refer to seminary-trained, ordained pastors. That's not the way the Lutheran Confessions use it. The word ordain in the Lutheran Confessions is a multi-purpose word that refers to ordaining bishops or pastors or deacons. And in the Lutheran practice, you have to have a call before you're ordained, and since the Confessions state that deacons are ordained, it means they also consider them to be called, but to a different office than that of pastor. Okay, now what about C.F.W. Walther, kind of the father of the Missouri Synod? Did he accept three orders of clergy? Well, on the one hand, it doesn't make any difference because we subscribe to the confessions, not to Walther. But you already know the answer to this question. When the Saxons came to America from Germany, they brought with them a bishop, Stefan, and pastors, including Walther, and deacons. So you see, there had already been 300 years of having those three offices, bishop, pastor, deacon, and they just brought with them from Germany the practice of having those three orders. Walther was a presbyter and there were deacons underneath them. Now, Walther's book, Church and Ministry, has ten theses, or statements of belief, and then after each thesis, he quotes various Lutheran theologians, including Luther, to back up his thesis. Okay, so thesis eight is, the pastoral ministry is the highest office in the church, and from it stem all other offices in the church. Now, in fact, it names deacons ten times in only 14 pages in that chapter. This deacons, along with pastors, as called ministers. Walther has a very long quote from Martin Chemnitz, which talks about grades or orders of the holy ministry in which he includes deacons, and he cites Acts 6 and 1 Timothy 3, and both Chemnitz and Luther are quoted in Walther to say that Acts 6 includes deacons who are ordained to the order and order of ministry. And so deacons are one order, grade, office of minister, just as pastors are. And they assume that the office of deacon is normal in the Lutheran Church, not unusual. Okay, so what happened in Synod history is Stephen chose immorality and got dumped. And so they didn't have a bishop for a while. But then the bishop reemerged with an American title, namely pastor, an American way of electing them, and with an American sense of limited authority. But the functions of a bishop continued in the president and in the district presidents, in that they, like bishops, 
oversaw congregations and pastors. And so Walther's way, the early Missouri Synod way, the confessional way, is that there are three orders of clergy, which include bishop or president, and pastor or presbyter, and also deacon. This continued for a long time in Synod, until deacons for some reason faded out in the beginning of the 1900s for unknown reasons. Okay, so what do we see? The Lutheran Confessions teach that the deacon is one order or office of minister. It's one type of called and ordained clergyman. A deacon is neither pastor nor layman, and he has liturgical functions. This is what the Lutheran Confessions and Walther said. Lutheran Confession terminology promotes deacons as an office of ministry. The trouble is, our recent Missouri Synod tradition uses different terminology than the confessions use. That's the problem. And so we kind of overlook the root word ord, that there's an orderly process in which men become ordained to an order of clergy, which is either the order of deacon or the order of pastor. Um, if we used confessional terminology it would close this knowledge gap about deacons that we have and clear the way to accepting them across synod. Okay, so there's a controversy in synod. Some see deacons as just an administrative license like a secretary or the name of a graduate of a coursework and we can dump those. Okay, others in synod see the confessional fact that there is an order or office of deacon, just as there's an order or office of pastor. And to eliminate them would be as grave of an error as eliminate the order or office of pastor, because both of these, the order or office of pastor and the order or office or beruf of deacon, belong in the church together. That's what the Lutheran Confessions and the Scriptures say. So the debate of and the need of deacons is not going to go away because the Lutheran confessions hold that it's a biblical office. And just as a rose bush needs rose stem and leaf, so also the church needs pastor, deacon, and laity. Now, in fact, almost every church has an office of pastor. It goes by different names. Sometimes they're called priest or elder. But every Christian church, almost everyone, has an office of deacon as well, although it goes by different titles and slightly different responsibility, just as the responsibility of pastors differ from church body to church body. One problem is that in church history, they use the word deacon to refer to social worker, which confused the whole issue. But the fact is that almost every church body has what amounts to a deacon just as it has what amounts to a pastor. And I've looked at 18 and counting church bodies and outlined what their title is for pastor and what their title is for deacon. The Missouri Synod is almost the only anomaly, almost the only oddity in that we don't have a nationally recognized office or order of deacon. Okay, so there's two gaps in the Synod's view. One is the theological gap. We need to learn what the Lutheran Confessions say about deacons, because we don't know. But then the second is the administrative gap. We do need to have um, a recognized office of deacon across Synod. Deacon is neither layman nor pastor, and so to say they're just laymen who preach misses the whole point of the Lutheran Confessions, in addition to the Scriptures. Now, we've had three task forces address this in the last few decades under President Harrison and Kishnick and Barry. Now, they didn't know what to do with deacons because they didn't know that deacons were a Lutheran confessional office. That was the problem. And so they either tried to squeeze them in to the clergy, into the ordained pastor category, most recently by 
wanting to make some of them spe specific ministry pastors view a colloquy. And these three task forces wanted to dump all the other deacons. But the problem was they just didn't understand that in the Lutheran confessions, as in the scriptures, there's an order, office, roof, or vocatus of deacon, just as there's an order, office, roof, or vocatus of pastor. They're similar but distinct. And so we need to fill that knowledge gap with the knowledge of the Lutheran confessions and the scriptures on deacons and fill the administrative gap by having a recognition of the office of deacon. Now, I don't think there's a conspiracy against deacons, at least not yet at this point, but there is a big gap in knowledge. We've all been shortchanged. We never learned the importance of deacons in the Lutheran confessions as well as in scriptures. We've been behind on this. But there's a bit of a quandary, because if you say you follow Lutheran confessions, you also have to say there's an office or order of deacon, just as there's an office or order of pastor. Either that, or turn your back on the confessions and pick recent American Missouri Synod tradition. It's your choice. Officially, we believe, teach, and confess Scripture and the Lutheran Confessions and say the Lutheran Confessions are the rule and norm. If we really believe that, then we will train, examine, call, elect, ordain people to the order or office of deacon just as we do to the order or office of pastor. This is what the history, the strength of the Lutheran Church always has been. And if the Missouri Synod restores the order or office of deacon, then we will be much closer to following the rule and the norm of both the Bible and of the Book of Con Concord and the Lutheran Confessions. If we do accept those two offices side by side, deacon and pastor, we'll find great strength in the church, great blessing through their ministry, and God will cause wonderful things to happen in the future as he has begun to do in the past through the deacons who represent Christ's church on earth in a distinct way and bring blessing to his people. Good day.